2025, designers are getting replaced by prompts. Here's what I think about that. So currently, the way the world works is that we have a lot of different design softwares, for example, Framer, Webflow, Wix Studio, you name it, WordPress. But we also have an entirely different side full of prompt driven design builders. Right now we have a couple examples such as lovable.dev, Framer has a couple of wireframe and type inputs, Reloom, all these type of builders are currently trying to replace designers. But is that the case? Will designers actually be replaced 2025? Do you need to change your job? All of that, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So we're gonna split this up into four different parts. The first one, what does AI actually do very well? Number two, what does AI fall short in, if anything? Number three, does that mean that we're gonna get replaced? And finally, number four, what we can actually do about it moving forward. So let's jump into it. So our first example here, we have Reloom.io, an incredible developer's dream, right? This is a product that you type in your website, and we can even try with an example here without even having an account, and it'll just generate an entire website for us. We can then have a wireframe here for the entire website that we just decided to create right now with our example, and then we can also generate a style guide with this. So now that we have that done, we can go ahead and just export to one of the many different options, and the website is literally done. Copy, images, the entire flow, literally everything. And we can add in a lot of different videos we can add a lot of concepts and everything that comes with that so with that being said does that mean that people that need websites like for example an entrepreneur that is deciding to sell strawberries does that person go into Reloom and create a brand new website or do they contact a designer to create a website? So in my opinion, it's similar to someone buying a template. You have an entire place that you can just buy a website right now, buy a template, and you can launch that if you wanted to. But it's gonna take a lot of time and effort to take that base plate and actually convert it into something that actually matters for your website, for your company. And it's not as simple as just creating something right now and just getting it to go. This is much easier than buying a template and doing all the things that you need to do. But in the case that you actually use Reloom or any of the other AI builders like lovable.dev, there comes a point where you need to change something. It's not just gonna be one and done, you create the website and you go. I mean, maybe it is, but for example, I'm gonna click on website here, click on this example. If we needed to change, I don't know, the way that this gradient looks, the way that this animation adapts to mobile versus tablet, I don't know, so many different examples and use cases for actually being a designer, then it's gonna fall a little bit short for now. But it's amazing that we can get to the example that we saw earlier with AI without even writing a ton of words, it's just one or two sentences, and it'll create an entire website for you without even doing much work. And here are some examples that people have done with this software. But then again, this is using Webflow. So when you finish this, you actually need to ship it, then it's gonna come to the point where you need to actually go into Webflow, change everything, change, I don't know, colors, you need to be able to know how to do that. So that's gonna fall a little bit short. Now, other areas where it falls short is that it's gonna look very similar to other websites built in the same way. You're gonna have thousands of websites that look exactly the same with the same fonts, the same colors, because for the majority of people, they're gonna see that they can just launch something quickly and just choose that because one and done is better than perfection for most cases. So whatever the AI is gonna spit out, people are arguably just going to launch that. And the AI is being trained on a certain set of websites and examples. So it's just going to use whatever information it gets in order to ship the next one that you demand it to. So it's always going to be very similar. In the case that you want to go for something way more creative and you have, for example, a portfolio website for an agency or something like that, it doesn't make any sense to use AI right now because you're not going to get these type of super unique examples with, I don't know, this crazy animation. You're not going to get that. You're not going to get this type of button that shifts the way it moves. You're not going to get this entire scrolling interaction as crazy as it is. Most people don't need this for their sites. This is gonna be some sort of portfolio site and it just won the site of the day for awards or it was a nominee or whatever. So this kind of site, you're not really gonna get for designers, but it takes a very special kind of designer to be able to pull that off or develop for you. So when you go into Framer, you go into Wireframer and you can say, give me a parallax hero animation. We'll see that it can't actually produce any crazy animations and effects for us. It's only gonna give us a very basic landing page layout. 
but the animation side of things, it's not really gonna be any good. So we can zoom in here and say, I've created a landing page to highlight a parallax here animation. Okay, but there's no actual parallax animation. So if we scroll here, there's nothing that actually says that there's an animation going on. There's no components. There's nothing really indicative here that this is an actual animation. So that sort of nuance AI is still falling super short. We have websites that look very similar, act very similar, have that kind of cookie cutter frame for now. And anything with a little bit more nuance, a little bit more personality is going to fall short. So for now, AI, all it's doing is it's giving you a template. In my opinion, what you can do after that is, of course, you can create your own website and do this kind of design and go as crazy as you want. But then you're still doing a very similar set of steps as you would if you just bought a template. So it doesn't really change things for designers. It just kind of cuts that zero to one process for a lot of people. And most people that are kind of on the edge of being able to be a little bit more hands on with a website that they want to create. Of course, they're not going to use a designer anymore because it's easier for them to just say what they want, spit out a simple website and go with that than deal with an agency, deal with a designer. It's also much cheaper. So why would they even bother? So when it comes to what humans can actually do better, we, number one, bring a lot of taste and context into the project. There's going to be a lot of nuance, as I said, and you don't really get that when you just type in your prompt. You can create many different versions of the same website with AI and just kind of go back and forth, back and forth until you have something that you want but you're never going to get that type of personality touch as you would with a human being for now, at least. So where does that leave us right now? So in my opinion, designers who adapt are the ones that are going to win. You need to be able to use AI for the client because number one, they know that it exists. So you saying that you're not using AI is kind of silly. Number two, being able to use AI to move faster for the client is also going to be a big benefit. You can sell it as your entire process. So you can say, look, we're going to cut down on time and costs and we're going to give you a 90% done website with AI and then we're going to add in our own touch. That might be appealing to some clients. It's not all about starting from zero because sometimes with AI, if you start with AI, then it might add a lot of bloat and you don't want that. So maybe that's something you don't want to add. You know, it's all about using what you have in front of you, either deciding to go with AI or not with AI, but you can't ignore it. It's at the point now where you can't just say now nah, it's that's just a, a trend. It's going to go away because it's not at least for right now. If you know how to use AI and guide it to help you in your projects, you're going to be 10 times more valuable to a client than just saying, we're actually going to do everything ourselves in house, because then they're going to go with someone else that uses AI and they're going to go much faster, much cheaper. So you need to kind of understand that other people are going to be using these tools and try to use it to your advantage as well. So if this video resonates with you, take a look at the video where I use AI to change my entire workflow and leave a like and subscribe on this video as well, because it's going to help out the channel. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.